Testing, testing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Testing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't hear anything. Testing, testing, testing. Huh? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. up a high praise to hallelujah. God today. Thank you, God. Hello, hallelujah. hello. Amen. Oh, am I am I live? I, amen. 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 Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. 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 <laughs> uh, if you want to sing with us, please sing with us to intro it as we welcome the Holy Spirit into the sanctuary and let him just amen. rest here. Amen. here because we believe in worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. With our worship today, let's focus our attention to the book of John, the first chapter, starting with verse number one. And there the Bible says in the New International Version of the Bible, reading together, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Hello. We also believe that we are here for mission and a purpose, not 
on Candler Road for just another social club, but we are here to spread God's message. So I invite you to repeat with me our vision and our mission. Vision is sharing God's love unconditionally, unselfishly, and graciously. Our mission, worship God, share Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are here because we believe that you have something very special for us. We don't invite you here because we know your presence was here before we arrived. So God, we ask that in this space, in this place, that you accept our worship. Let it be, Lord, a sweet aroma. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church, and Happy New Year. This Sabbath, our first hymn of this decade will be hymn number 10. Come, Christians, join and sing. That means all of us need to join to sing. Here we go.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, that was mighty weak. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know about you, but is there anybody just grateful today <laughs> that you are still here? Oh, you can do better than that. You, you, you just don't believe what you just sang. Hallelujah. Oh, man, is there anybody just grateful today? Because when the devil tried to take you out, you are still here. When you had no food in those covers, but God just opened up the windows of a blessing just started pouring them out on you. Is there anybody just grateful today that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you don't know where you would be. It's 2020 and we are still here. I just need somebody in here to show some sign today that God's been mighty good to you. I can do it all by myself. I just believe that God, the God we serve is a mighty good God and we'll sing forever and ever. Hallelujah. Oh man, I'm just so glad that we are here in God's house, so the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Well, while you're here, you, you might as well just get happy on with me because we are here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Ooh, ooh, we go work with you. We go work with you. There are, there are a few things that we want to keep on our minds and on, my, on our hearts. Although we are here in a new uh, year, we still know that the devil is still actively trying to take us down. But uh, God is on our side. So please help me in praying specifically um, this week for Elder Presley. He just buried his mother this last uh, Thursday, I believe there in Florida. So please keep him in our prayer. Sister Joseph is in the hospital. So we want to make sure that we keep her in our prayers as well. Brother Gadsden needs our prayers. I just heard earlier today that Karen Saunders, um, her cancer has returned. So we want to make sure that we keep her in our prayers too. Um, Brother and Sister Cobb, they are watching us still from their home. So we want to keep them in our prayers. Sister Smichael lost two family members this past week. The mother of Sister Jared is not doing well. Ginger Luby is not feeling well. Our own Miss Johnson isn't, isn't at her best either. And those teachers, our, our students are going back to school Monday morning. So we want to keep all of those students and the teachers in our prayer as well. What do you say? If you have one of these bulletins, just go ahead and wave it at me. If you don't have one of these uh, blue bulletins, go ahead, wave your hand. Ushers, there are hands all around us because they, they need a blue bulletin in that hand. For in this bulletin, you'll find all of the various activities and announcements of our church. There are a couple in particular that I want to make sure that you are made, where, made aware of. There's an insert that looks like this. It's uh, Pentecost now. We're talking about a 50 days of prayer and fasting that's coming up at the end of the month um, you can you can pick whatever you like for fasting I wouldn't advise you to fast from food for all 50 days because you know that might not be good but you pick you pick what you need God to rescue you from and and prepare your hearts and minds for what is to come there um, we, we have a little Bible challenge if you didn't see this walking in, I want to make sure that you get one of these on your way out. For in it, we can read the Bible and read uh, the Conflicts of the Ages series. Um, it's all right there lined out for you. This calendar is for January, but each month we'll have a new calendar so you can keep up with your Bible reading plan. And they tell me there's a special prize for those who finish by December 31st. <laughs> now, I want you to know, that I'm going to be reading too. And, um, you know, I hope you give visitors um, <laughs> um, prizes as well. <laughs> Amen. I want to make sure that uh, if you do not receive electronically this newsletter that the pastor emailed to all of our members, we have some copies there in the foyer for you. And if you didn't receive it by email, please let one of our ushers know your email address so that we can uh, receive that. Um, you don't have any paper to pass out, but if you need a tithe envelope, you, you can just take one of those, put your email on there when you turn in your tithe and offering, and we'll make sure you get our newsletter. Uh, the leadership retreat for our church is coming up on um, next Sunday from 9 to 5. Leaders, please be in place with your assistance for that wonderful time. 
and Interact Wednesday resumes this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Want to make sure that you also take note of the calendar of events that are coming up. Um, we have on next Sabbath, the farewell Sabbath for my family and I. I gotta tell Deidre to put a little sad face in there because we will surely miss you, certainly. And on the very next Sabbath, oh, weeping only lasts for one night because our new pastor is coming to be with us. So we want to make sure that we are in place for that. That's enough talking for me, I think. Let's bring up um, Bill Luby, who will give us our welcome for today. Good morning, Decatur. I must say it's very, very good to see each and every one of you, just knowing that God has blessed each of us to make it through the troublesome times that we live in, to be here to meet this morning. Um, how many of you are aware of the eight laws of health? You've heard of those, right? All right, I'll just list them for you, and they should be behind me here. And they are nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and t trust in God. And so when you put the acronym, the, the, the numbers together, get the acronym, it says New Start. And that's how people remember it, by just saying New Start, the eight laws of health. And I want to let you know that we have, uh, well, I don't know about some of you, I know with me, um, as I enter into this new year, I think about some things that I wish I could just start over again. Sometimes I wish I had a reset button. I could just go and just say, okay, I'm going to reset and do this over again. But we can't, we don't have that button. It doesn't exist. But when we have a new year, it gives us sort of a new start. It gives us a new chance to do things differently this year than we've done in the past. Amen? And so here at Decatur, I want to let you know, we have a new start program using the same uh, um, eight laws of health, but in a spiritual sense. When you come to Decatur, you are fed here, so you get your nutrition. You're fed God's word and God's principles. When you come to Decatur here, you get your workout because we have different programs. You get out in the streets and we, we meet people. Uh, you get to serve in here, so you, you get your exercise. Also, you get your water in a sense. Water we know is something that purifies us. So while we're here, we get purification. We get cleansing because we spend more time with God and we adopt his principles. Also here at Decatur, I want you to know that we get sunlight. We know that God, Jesus, is the light of the world. And so we, we, we lift up Christ here. And so the shine, the, the, his sun shines on all of us. Also, there's temperance. And there's temperance here. You get guidelines and tools to learn how to escape from those habits, those things that weigh us down, that trip us up sometimes. We learn temperance here. Also, there's air here. We know that um, breath is, the, I'm sorry, prayer is the breath of the soul. So we, we are praying church here at Decatur. And we pray not even just on Wednesday nights, but all throughout the week. We pray, we pray for each other uh, here at Decatur. Um, also, uh, rest. Now we know we're Adventists, so we're going to get our rest. But um, here at Decatur also, we, we emphasize just, just taking that rest and coming together and, and worshiping God on, on the day that he set aside that we can just come together, put all the world stuff aside, and just focus on him. And lastly, we trust in God here, amen? We learn to trust in God. We all go through things, and we're here to support each other, to lift each other up, and to know that God is in your life. God is uh, blessing you in some way. So if you need a new start this year, I want to see your hands. Need a new start? I know I do. Amen, amen. So let's keep these principles in our minds as we start this new year out. I want to ask if we have any body visiting with us for the very first time. We want to see our first time visitors. You're here for the first time. Let me see you stand up if you don't mind. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you. All right, brother. Back. Anybody else? You're visiting with us for the first time. It is so good. Can continue standing, please. We just want to say that we're very thankful to have you here with us. Um, and I know that when you leave here, you'll be able to testify of the blessing, the joy, the fellowship that you've experienced here at Decatur. Amen. All right, Pastor, our visitors. <laughs> Man, we are just so, we're so excited that you've joined us today. And uh, I want you to do this for me. I want you to take out your cell phone. Mine's right here. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you too. Take out your cell phone and text the word first, that word, to the number 619-DECATOR. 
I'm not gonna tell you all the digits. I I actually did that my first week here, and it worked. So the word first, six one nine Decatur. That way, we can keep up with you. You can keep up with us, and we'll just have a great uh, growing relationship together. Um, as I was walking in the door, someone stopped me because today is January the 4th, the first Sabbath of January, and that means today is Juanita Sub... Juanita? Ah, you know her quite well. It's her birthday today. What you might not have known is that she turned 75 on today. To God be the glory for that. So on the count of three, we're going to do it. We're going to say happy Sabbath birthday. You ready? Two, three. Happy Sabbath birthday. We just love birthdays here at Decatur, but we think they're extra special when they fall on the Sabbath because you get not one, but two blessings. The blessing of, an, of life and the blessing of another Sabbath. And since we're having a happy Sabbath today, I just invite everyone to stand to your feet Get somebody that you haven't seen all week long and tell them Happy New Year. Also tell them it's greater here at Decatur.
just before Sister Narayan comes, I probably should have made this announcement during welcome time, but today is also Children's Church right in the Otis Taylor Fellowship Hall. So if you have any children with you between the ages of 3 and 12, we have a service specifically designed with them in mind. So you can go down at any time, I guess, after um, what's going on to, to take your children to Children's Church. Uh, right in the Otis Taylor Fellowship Hall. Sister to Ryan will come at this time. Happy Sabbath, Decatur. Happy first Sabbath of the new year. Um, as you know, I'm Health Ministries, and today I would like to share something. Um, I like the welcome that Brother Luby gave, and it was a great um, new start. Uh, the idea of starting over again, we keep saying it repeatedly. Um, we're grateful that God does give second chances. One of the things that um, I would like to share with you, how many of you have ever fasted before? Okay, how many of you know, have ever heard of intermittent fasting? Okay, well, what, well when we talk about fasting, you know, of course, it's abstaining or reducing whatever that thing that we choose to um, let go of. Someone actually, I was going to talk about something else today, but someone handed me an article. And if nothing else, I want you to get this. I want you to look this article up to read it. It's from the Journal, uh, the New England Journal of Medicine, and it is from December 26, 2019. And what this article says, it says the effects of intermittent fasting on health, aging, and disease. We've been looking at fasting for over 100 years. What is the effects of fasting? And they have come up in a nutshell that intermittent fasting alters and improves our health. Did you know that already? Did you know that Spirit of Prophecy has encouraged us that one day a week that we should fast? So science is catching up to what God already said. We know that Daniel altered his diet as we were talking about in the Sabbath school lesson, he and the other um, three Hebrew boys. And what were the results that they got? They excelled. They excelled mentally, they excelled physically. God was able to lead, lift them up out of the pack of everyone else. Uh, a couple of things that this article pointed out was that when we talk about intermittent fasting, that can be one of three different things. Intermittent fasting um, can be regimens where you alternate the day, one day a week that you fast, or they have where you, um, fat, you eat five days and then two days of the week you cut your calories down to minimal. Or one of the more prominent ways of intermittent fasting that you're seeing on social media, you're hearing about on, on different places, is what we call where you try to get up to um, 16 to 18 hours of abstinence from food only drinking water. That's the one of the most popular ones. And you hear people talking about um, um, keto, um, on the keto diets, it's all tied together with that. Well, what we've discovered, what has been discovered, and we're talking about is that the things that happen when we do intermittent fasting is it improves healing. They have found that when they do surgical procedures, if there is intermittent fasting prior to the surgery, that the trauma that happens during the surgery is less, and the healing and inflammation are better. Uh, we found that, um, they've also found that it affects aging. When they did studies in rats, they found that intermittent fasting, where they only gave them 40% of, of the food calories um, several times a week, it gave them an 80% increase in their lifespan. Um, when they looked at various types, they found that it, it, it had a great variation, but the numbers ended up panning out when they did it across the board to different um, sexes, different types of mice versus rats, that you got like a 4 to 45% increase. Now, in people, what does that say? Well, it doesn't tell us exactly, but we do know we do animal studies first, and generally, if we see things in mice, very often there's a correlation in humans. So we know that the United States have an obesity problem, and we're eating ourselves to death. So I would encourage you to read this article, Effects of Intermittent Fasting on Health, Aging and Disease, and as we talk about a new start, let's be committed to be conscientious of what we eat and how much and how frequently we eat. And we ask God to bless us as we go into this new year and be determined to be more healthful.
Our scripture reading for today comes from Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 5, and Lamentation chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. I will be reading from the New King James Version. Please stand as we reverence the reading of the Word of God. Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or these 18 on whom the Tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Lamentation chapter three, verses 22 and 23. And I read, through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness. May your soul be refreshed from the reading of the word of God today. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath and Happy New Year. Pray for me because this has been a trial. I'm glad to be out of 2019. I am. I had some trials at the last minute. I lost two family members right during the holidays a cousin, and then I lost my sister. But I know Jesus walks with me, and I know He's a comfort. And it ain't easy, but I trust in God because he knows for the things that he allows to happen in our lives. So I ask God, if there's anything in me coming into this 2020, change me. Everybody can change something, but when you allow God to make the change, then it really is change. You can go ahead. So today I'm going to sing for y'all, change me. Change me, oh God. Make me more like you. Change me, oh God. Wash me through and through. Create. Worship you. I need 
need you to. Jesus. Change me, Jesus. Change me anything that's not of you. Take it out of me. I need you to. From the inside out, Lord, I need you to. Hey, Lord, I need you to. Thank you, Jesus. So that I may serve you better. Lord, that's all I want. Teach me. Come on, come on and change me. Change my mind, change my walk, change my talk. Change me. Come on, Jesus. Change me. Change me. change has come over, come over, over me, me, oh, oh y'all know this one, Therefore, a wonderful change. serve an awesome God. You know, um, over this past three years, I've been on a journey. And I've got to say that this journey has brought me closer to my Lord and Savior. 
And as I read the Word of God, I'm reading it with more of a personal view towards me. I know that when you're reading, it's easy to read and be disconnected from what you're reading because you're actually just reading it and not experiencing it. So I'm going to read you a couple of texts this morning. And as I read it, I w- I'm going I'm to expound on it just a little bit, but I want you to experience what the Word of God is saying to all of us as we get into 2020. I'm starting with Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. And Paul asks the question, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then he asks, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword And then he says, as it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as as sheep to be slaughtered. In the King James Version, the next thing it says is yet. But in the English Standard Version, it says, no, we're not sheep for the slaughter. It says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. How many of you know that you are more than conquerors? In Ephesians chapter 1, same author, Paul, starting with verse 17, because some of us don't understand the power that we have. Are we really more than conquerors? And why are we more than conquerors? So in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17, Paul says, and he's praying, he says, I'm praying that the God of our Lord Jesus, to the Lord of our, to the God of our, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. He's talking about Jesus here. Having your eyes and your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of the glory of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe? According to the working of his great might. Do you see all the adjectives? Immeasurable, greatness, uh, glorious. He says that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him, watch this, at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Now that's really impressive. Who are we talking about right there? We're talking about Jesus, right? We're talking about Jesus, right? And then when you get to verse, uh, sorry, to chapter 2 and verse 4, I want you to get this. He says, but God being rich in mercy... Because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you understand the significance of what we just read? Where did it say that Jesus has been placed? 
at the right hand of the Father, above every dominion, above every power, above everything that is coming against you. And then it says that you are seated with Jesus Christ right now. What is it that you're going through? You see, the thing is, a lot of times uh, we see ourselves as weaklings in this thing. But the Bible says that you are more than a conqueror. It says that you're seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places right now. I don't know about you, but I'm just thankful to God this morning. When I read this, I, I, had, I had a worship session going on in my house because I was just like, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am sitting in heavenly places with Jesus right now. So I'm not sure what it is you're going through right now. But I want to encourage you this morning as you come down that you're seated in heavenly places with Jesus right now as more than a conqueror. should never be discouraged when we take it to the Lord in prayer. Dear most kind and ever loving Father, we are so thankful for Jesus Christ who came to this earth, lived, died and is raised again forevermore that we might have right to the tree of life that we might have life and have it more abundantly lord we are so thankful that that you came and, and because you came that we have forgiveness of sins lord that uh because of your word that we are clean through the word that you have spoken Lord, we are so thankful that at the beginning of 2020, Lord, there are many who are uh, looking towards what they can accomplish this year, but, but we're looking towards the experience that we can have with you. Lord, we are so thankful, Lord, that we can be here with our church family, Lord. Your church that you, has, that you have set up to be our support system here on earth. Lord, we are so thankful that together, Lord, we can accomplish the things that you have asked us to do. Lord, to be light in a dark world. To be salt and a savor to a world that is needing the, the, the salt of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you have called us, Lord, to uh, relieve suffering and to, split, to spread your love abroad that those who come in contact with us, Lord, will, will ask, what is it about you? And we can say with confidence that we've been with Jesus. And because we've been with Jesus, Lord, we can share him. 
and they can come to know you, Lord, who is the Savior of all. Lord, as we come before you, Lord, as, as a church family, as we begin 2020, Lord, Lord, we know that you have a great work for us to do here on Candler Road. Lord, help us not to fall short of that mission, but help us that by your spirit that we will move forward with boldness and with clarity, knowing, Lord, that you are leading us and that as you lead us that we can do great things for you, Lord. Help us to walk in the power that you have given to us, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will, you will be with those who have come down front, Lord. Lord, as our faces differ, so do our needs. There are some who have come down because uh, they're praying for loved ones who may be sick. Lord, we're so happy that you are the balm in Gilead who can make the wounded whole, that you're still a healer, Lord. And so we just want to thank you right now that you're restoring health into those who are sick right now. Lord, uh, there are some who have come down because they're praying for loved ones who they need uh, to be saved in your kingdom. Lord, we're so thankful that you want to save them more than we want them to be saved. And so, Lord, we ask that you will work out your will in the lives of our loved ones, Lord, who need to know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, in a marked and special way, Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones. Lord, who need to feel your comfort right now. Lord, help them to know that, that when they feel loneliest, that when they feel most oppressed, that when they feel most sorrowful, Lord, that you are right there by them. But Lord, help us not to forget to do our part. Help us to call. Help us to visit. Help, them, help us to be your hands and feet of love, Lord, towards them that they may know that you are with them. Lord, uh, we pray that you will uh, be with your manservant, who you have called to preach your word this morning, Lord. Lord, we had asked that you will anoint him with power from on high. Lord, we ask that you will imbue him with power that as he speaks the word, Lord, that the words will not be his, but that they will come through him directly from you. And may your church be edified. May your people be blessed. And may we not leave here the same. Lord, uh, we just ask that we get a fresh anointing of your spirit this morning. Lord, because we realize that without the Holy Spirit, Lord, we are but ash. We are nothing. But we're thankful, Lord, that you have given us this free gift. Lord, that if we just hold on to him and, and tap into the power that he has given us, Lord, that, is, that there is nothing, nothing that we cannot do. Lord, so we ask that your Holy Spirit will be on every person in this place here this morning. Lord, we are just thankful. We are just grateful. Lord, we just lift up your name and we just worship you, Lord. And Lord, everything that we have asked this morning, Lord, we ask in the worthy name of Jesus because we realize there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. And if there's anything that I've failed to ask, Lord, we fail. We ask that you'll not fail to grant them unto us with blessings, we pray. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because we ask not.
Happy New Year. I know this is the time of year that we all reset. Uh, we all like to start anew, and a lot, of, a lot of that has to do with New Year's resolutions. Has anyone here set New Year's resolutions? Let me see, show of hands. Ooh, four people? Well, y'all staying the same? No, I'm kidding. I'm gonna get a little vulnerable here and share one of my New Year's resolutions, probably one of the only ones I've decided to do, th to do this year. And some of you might laugh, some of you might judge a little bit, but it's okay. I'm being vulnerable at church. Pastor got my back, thank you, Pastor. Um, I decided that I'm going to turn my red receipts on. Now, for those who don't know what that means, that means that people will know when I've opened their text message and will expect a prompt response from me. That's difficult for me. I like to juggle a lot of things and, I, and sometimes I drop the ball in a few places, but, but this year I decided I'm gonna turn my red receipts on. I appreciate that, I'm a sister. You and the pastor, I appreciate y'all. Um, I started thinking about what I was going to say during this moment before uh, tithe and offering time, and I thought about my New Year's resolution to turn on my red receipts, and I started thinking, you know what? I'm so glad that God is not like me. Because he never leaves me on red. Every time I call, every time I pray, every time I say, God, I need a little, he's always right there. He doesn't leave me, he doesn't scroll past, so I got something else I gotta do, like me. And in response to that great God in heaven that always cares about my needs, our needs, this church's needs, I think he deserves a little gratitude. And gratitude could be in the form of praise, like we just heard, like we're about to hear. Gratitude could be in the form of, I don't know, whatever you think, whatever you want to give to God. But also gratitude can come in the form of giving. And let's not forget, we got this, this uh, thermometer. What is what's this called? Thermometer? We got to fill that up. Amen. It's all right. We're going to fill it up. So I'm going to invite the deacons to come forward. They're waiting in the wings. Invite them up and we'll say a quick word of prayer. <clears throat> Eternal Father, Lord, we're just so grateful for your being always there for us, Lord. How every day, every hour, every moment, you are right there to help us in any moment of need. Father, you don't leave us on red like we do to others. Father, we're grateful for that. And Lord, in response to that, that amazing gift of, of your presence, Lord, we say, Lord, take what is ours because it's really yours. Thank you, Father. And in your son's name we pray. Amen. Oh, y'all, Satan be busy. name of Jesus. We come to bless the name of God. And Satan trying to get all up in my throat. I'm like, not today. Got to put the power of prayer on him. Hello. All right, you can go ahead on and get the track started because we're going to get it before Satan try to come back. <laughs> mm. oh. Y'all, his blood still works. His still works. I'm here to testify. You can turn that up, come on, honey. A little bit more. Mm. A little bit more. His blood still works, and I'm glad to be born. Yes, I am. Never lost its power. I'll never be. Oh, Lord. By the blood of the Lamb, His 
blood still works and I'm here to testify God is not dead he's still alive the same blood that was shed way back on Calvary is the same blood that's working out for me oh his blood redeems me from the stain of sin his blood it cleanses me deep down within so if you ask me how i made it and how i the blood still works. Can we give God a hand clap that the blood still works? Amen. Yes. Can you give God praise that the blood still works? Woo! 
Okay. So, you know, as y'all know, it's a new year. We all have our New Year's resolutions and things that we're going to promise ourselves not to do. And, and I'm the type of person, I don't really like New Year's resolutions because for me, they don't last past February. <laughs> Just being transparent. But I recently turned 30. Um, and we just want to thank God for 30 years of life. But um, not everything that I wanted to happen on my 30th birthday happened. But what God made me to realize is that I have people around me who care about me so much. Uh, and that I have everything that I need right now. And while I'm not comfortable with life, because comfortability is a dangerous place, I'm content. I'm content with knowing that God is with me. I'm content with the gift that he gave me. I'm content with eternal life because I know that I have it. And so this next song says, I have everything that I need because the great I am provides for me. How many of you know that today? That the great I am provides for you. Everything, no longer do you have to dilute your prayers with doubt and fear. Saturate them with the blood of God, with the blood. Because he's everything that you need. I have every.
you to be You're the I am, you are You're whoever I need you to be You're the I am, you are You're whoever I need you to be You're the I am, you are Can I say it till it rains in you? Whoever I need you to be You're the I am, you are song reminds us about how good God is, how he will never leave you or forsake you. <laughs> I must admit that I was feeling really down this morning, but the Lord gave me a pleasant surprise that turned it around, that turned my whole mood around, and I was just asking God, like, could you please just get down on the, on the inside of me, and, and Lord, just change my whole heart. And do you know that <laughs> the Lord answers every single prayer? Amen because he cares about us. Your mercy is 
loves that. Said you are good. Mm. From the fruit of your lips, can you just say that again? Can you just give God praise? You are your mercy. Sitting here this 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 morning and tears are coming to my eyes because you see you all don't know just <laughs> I'm sitting next to somebody who read the scripture this morning. Sister Sherry Martin. And I'm sure maybe some of you know her. Sometime late last year, Sherry stepped up to me and said, I know you. Do you remember me? She took me back 30 years ago. A little town called Junction City, Kansas. Stationed at Fort Riley. The big red one. And we both were serving there. 30 years ago. I was just reflecting on how good God has been to me. Served during that first Gulf War and could have lost my life. I was just reflecting. I'm thankful for my family this morning. We have a young lady who is like a daughter to us. Sister Andre, just wave your hands, wave, wave your hands, amen, amen, amen. Yeah, she's, she's visiting with us. Um, and last night, Pam went to pick her up, and it was raining terribly. And they came back and said her car slid past a stop sign, directly into the path of an oncoming car. I'm just thankful for the goodness and the grace of God. Is there anybody here today who's just thankful? <laughs> Dr. Felder, Sister Felder, good to see you all this morning. Just thankful that God has been so good. He's shown us grace 
and he's shown us mercy. Grace is when you get something you don't deserve. Mercy is when you don't get something you deserve. Well, some of you missed that. That's all right. Thank you, praise team. Can you all put your hands together and affirm? We praise God for you. I got some other things I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it at the end of the message today. Um, I want us to get into the Word. If you would stand with me and take your Bibles in hand as we turn to the book of Luke. What book did I say, everybody? Luke chapter 13 and verses 6 through 9. On this first day of a brand new year. Luke 13. In verses 6 through 9. This is the English Standard Version. And it reads thus, and he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came seeking fruit on it. Give me a little more, just a little more here on, on this microphone. He came seeking fruit on it, and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. My topic this afternoon is a simple one. Why am I still here? God, speak to us now. We're waiting to hear your word in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated in his presence. We also want to thank Sister Anjane, amen, for blessing our hearts today. The blood still works. Why am I still here? Many years ago, the Williams brothers wrote a gospel hit entitled, Still Here. The lyrics went something like this, heartaches, I had my share of heartaches, but I'm still here. Trouble, I've seen my share of trouble, but I'm still here. Bruises, I've had my lumps and bruises, but I'm still here. Loneliness, I've had my share of loneliness, but I'm still through it all. I made it, and I'm still here. Without a doubt, we all can declare by faith on January the 4th, 2020, that we're still here. For some of us, 2019 was a difficult and challenging year. Some of us endured trials that we did not know how or if we were going to make it through. Do I have a witness in here today? But we just believe that if we just kept it moving, putting one foot in front of the other, that we just might get through to the other side. And like a phoenix rising from the ashes, we are still here. Some may have suffered the loss of loved ones and the pain is still an open wound, but you're still here. Some of us may have battled against an addiction that at times got the best of us, but through it all, we're still here. Oh, some folk may have even counted you out. Some may have wanted you out. Some sought to take you out. But look, you can say today, I'm still here. The question is why? Like that single leaf hanging on a tree in the midst of a brutal winter, you're still here. You've beaten all the odds and outlived the statistics. Life expectancy in America for white females is 80 years. For black females, it's 75 years. For white males, it's 75 years. And for black males, it's 68 years. And you have lived past that mark. Some of you, many of you, you can say, I'm still here. 
Even the word of God says that the days of our years are three score years and ten, that's seventy, by reason of strength. And some of you sitting here today have lived past the Bible age. Sister, sister, Juanita Sutler, celebrating 75 years today. You ought to put your hands together and give God some praise for her today. I'm still here. It begs the question today, why? Why? See, the temptation is to think that you're still here because you pulled yourself up by your own bootstraps or you rode your own boat, you made your own way. I'm still here because Lady Luck has smiled on me. I'm here because I got it going on. I'm a good person, so I deserve to be here, child. If those thoughts ever graced your mind or you currently entertain any of them, then you're no different than those folk who came to Jesus one day and struck a microphone in his face and said, Jesus, we want your perspective on something. I, 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 I can see them now. They're on Fox and Friends. The NBC's Today Show, or Chuck Todd's Meet the Press. What do you have to say, Jesus, about what happened a few years ago on a Las Vegas strip when a gunman opened fire from his hotel room and killed 59 in a country music concert? Or Jesus, what about all those people in those Texas churches who died recently to gun violence? Jesus, what about that crane that fell from a building in downtown Seattle during traffic, high traffic, killing Four people. They asked Jesus for his opinion, but the truth is that they already had one. Bad things only happen to bad people. So they considered themselves not just lucky, but better than to have escaped such calamities. Of course, back then, it wasn't a crane, but a tower. And it wasn't gun violence, but it was a sword. The sword of Pilate. The soldiers walked up in a temple and kill the worshipers, mingling their blood with the sacrifices. And nothing has changed, nothing new under the sun. Come on, say amen. So why are others gone and we're still here? It's an existential question that gets to the heart of God's judgment and grace. And Jesus answered the question as he often did by telling a story, a parable of a fig tree. Why am I still here? First of all, I want to let you know right away, right up front, so you don't need to guess, I'm still here because he's protected me. <laughs> See, the Bible says that a man had a fig tree planted in his, in his, in his vineyard, meaning, meaning he owned the vineyard. Somebody say he owned the vineyard. He owned it. It belonged to him. You see, when you own something, you aim to protect it. Can I get a witness? You want to hold on to it. You want to keep it. It belongs to you. And how do you do that, especially with a vineyard or any kind of agricultural pro project? Some of you have done some gardening. You build a fence. Come on, say amen. It was customary for owners of vineyards to build fences around their property Isaiah took up a song to describe a quarrel that God had with his people. In Isaiah 5 and verses 1 to 4, uh, he, wrote, uh, he wrote in song, Now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done for it? Here Israel is represented as God's vineyard, a vineyard that is protected by a fence, a fence that says this belongs to somebody, a fence that says you can't touch this. How many of you know that God is a fence? I said, how many of you know that God is a fence? You ought to be shouting amen right there. 
He's a wall of protection. This past year, there was a bullet with your name on it. The enemy had you in his sights. There was a target on your back, but God was a fence all around you. Oh, there was that car crash that you were in when people saw the car all crumpled and mangled and you walked away from it. They wondered how in the world you walked away from it. You ought to be able to testify. It was nothing but the grace and the goodness and the protection of Almighty God. The psalmist says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I trust, surely He will save you from the foul snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you. He will cover you. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall find refuge. Many years ago, there was a very bad forest fire in the Yellowstone National Park and after the fire the park rangers were walking through the park and one of them happened to kick over a dead bird that had been charred to a crisp and there standing under this dead bird were several baby chicks who had been preserved under mama bird's wing under his wing, I'm safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wild, still I can trust him. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me, and I am his child. Can I get a witness today? Under his wing, he's a protector. How many of you know he's better than ADT? Come on, say amen. It's not ADT that kept you all of 2019. No, the Lord is a fence all around me every day. Yeah. I've stopped by here today to say to you that you're still, you're still here because he's protected you all night, all day. Angels watching over me, my Lord. Aren't you glad about it? You ought to say hallelujah. You ought to say praise God. <laughs> I'm still here because he's protected me. But not only has he protected me, he's also planted me. Look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor. It's a neighbor. neighbor. He's planted you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We've been planted. The Bible says this man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Oh, I love this. Planted suggests that it had purpose. Somebody say purpose. It suggests intentionality. Y'all remember when Jesus cursed that fig tree? Where was it? Mm -hmm. It was by the wayside. Matthew 21, verse 19. The Bible says it was along the way, at the side of the road. Somebody dropped a seed, and the seed took root and grew right there. No fence around it and nobody to claim it. Anybody could just walk by and pluck one of the figs from this tree at the side of the road. Oh, let me just throw something in right there. Don't let anybody just walk by and pluck your fruit. <laughs> oh, had don't, don't, don't let anybody just walk by and pluck your fruit. You see, you let people do, do stuff to you when you either forget or you don't know that you belong to somebody. You let anybody walk up in your garden and take stuff from you because you don't know your value. You don't know that you belong to somebody, that somebody paid a price for you. The Apostle Paul said it in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 19 and 20. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought. You were purchased with a price. So glorify God in your body. You don't belong to you. You belong to him. You ought to shout amen right there. He purchased you for a price, not with silver or with gold, but with his own precious blood, the blood of Jesus. You and I are of inestimable value and worth. Somebody ought to shout amen. amen. We're protected and we're planted. 
But here is something else. Consider where this tree was planted. It was planted in this man's vineyard. Oh, you missed it. I said it was planted in the man's vineyard. It's a, a, a fig tree was planted in a vineyard. You, you get it? It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. A fig tree was planted in a vineyard. What, what, what grows in vineyards? Grapes grow in vineyards. What in the world <laughs> is a fig tree doing in a vineyard? Why did the owner put it there? Fig trees are very large trees. They use up, watch this now, they use up a whole lot of nutrients from the soil. They require a whole lot of water to grow them. Their large branches can house birds that can pick and eat the grapes. Why would he put a fig tree in a vineyard? I'm glad you asked. Because he loved figs. <laughs> yeah, I know you thought it's some, something, something deep and sophisticated. He just loved him figs. Mm-hmm. Brother man just wanted to have some figs. He loved figs, and so he put a fig tree in the vineyard so that whenever he wanted figs, he didn't need to go to the supermarket or the store. He didn't need to go to Walmart or Whole Foods. He can just go into his own vineyard and pick the figs he wants. Somebody ought to say amen. Let me hasten on to say that God has planted you with a purpose that you might produce some fruit for the enjoyment, for the enjoyment, for the enjoyment of the master. Mm, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. John 15 and verse 8, John 15 and verse 8. By this, by this is my Father glorified, that you bear much what? Fruit. Let me read it again. John 15 verse 8. By this my Father is glorified. Change that, change that text on the screen. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Jesus said that the Father is glorified when his children are fruitful. Did y'all get that? The Father is glorified when his children are fruitful. Oh, I remember when my dad used to come to watch me play chess in tournaments. He knew very little. As a matter of fact, he knew nothing about chess. But I had a friend who helped my dad understand what was going on by simply giving him some hand signals. And every time he saw I was doing well, my dad would stick his chest out. He was proud of his son. I want to let you know that your heavenly father is glorified. Your father sticks his chest out. When you bring forth fruit in your life. Paul said that the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, Temperance against such, there is no law, or as one translation has it, there is no limit. Are you bearing fruit for the glory of God? This is important because this is how people know that you and I are his disciples. It, it's, it's, it's not by our Sabbath keeping, our vegetarian or vegan diets. It's not by our tithe paying or any of those things, though they are all important. Are y'all with me today? But how is it that they know we are his disciples? It is by our love. They shall know we are Christians by our love. Can people see Jesus in you? Can people see Jesus in me? It is by the fruit we bear and the love we share that people know who we are and whose we are. Somebody ought to say amen right there. The apple don't fall too far from the tree. You've been planted with a purpose to bring forth fruit for the glory of God. You're still here because he's protected you. You're still here because he's planted you. He has a purpose for you. If you got that, let me hear you shout amen. amen. And finally, you're still here because he's patient with you. Well, that's the word. Somebody ought to say, that's the word right there. He's protected me. 
he's purposed me, and he's patient with me. Well, the Bible says that for three years the owner came to this fig tree. For three years, he came to this fig tree looking for fruit on it, and he found none. After a few years of growth, they tell me that fig trees blossom and fruit. After all this man had done for this fig tree, putting it in his own vineyard, protecting it with a fence, taking care of it, was it not reasonable for him to expect some fruit? I'm actually expecting a response, so let me read it again. Because <laughs> we got to get this. After all that this man had done for this fig tree, he put a fence around it, he would nurtured it, cared for it, watered it, fertilized it, manured it, watched over it. After all that he had done for it, was it not reasonable for him to expect some fruit from it? Mm -hmm. When you plant a garden, don't you expect to eat from it? You say, Pastor, I'm not into uh, planting vegetables and all of that. I plant flower gardens. Well, don't you expect to one day enjoy the flowers? Okay, you know, you're not a gardener. Maybe you own a business. You got some venture capital. Huh? You're an entrepreneur. You started your own business. Come on, say. Why did you start the business? Well, you want to provide a service. You want to render something good. Come on, say amen. But you're also interested in making a profit. Am I right? Am I right? You're interested in making, it, in making a profit. That's why you're in business. Come on, say amen. Some of you have investment portfolios. You have invested in the stock market, other kinds of financial vehicles, mutual funds, bonds, etc., etc., etc. Why? <laughs> because you anticipate a return down the road. Come on, say amen. Maybe you think, Pastor, I'm, I'm not into all that. I'm just a student trying to make my way through school. Oh, so you go to classes and you study hard. Why? Because one day you want to march across that stage with that diploma in your hand. Come on, say amen. In other words, you expect that after you've invested in it, you're going to get something out of it. Come on, say amen. That all your hard work is going to pay off one day. So this owner who represents God comes to the fig tree, which represents Israel, and by extension, the church, time and time again, looking for some figs. And to his dismay and disappointment, he finds none. So he says to the vine dresser who represents Jesus, Let's cut it down. But why should it cumber the ground? Why should it use up the soil? See, the problem with an unproductive fig tree is not only that it does not bear fruit when it's supposed to, it's not only that it robs the owner of his investment and the deserved fruit of his labor, but the greater problem with an unproductive fig tree is that it uses up resources that other plants need to thrive. It cumbers the ground. It takes up space that could be better used or occupied by other fruit-bearing trees. So it not only causes loss to the owner by its non-productivity, but it further hurts the entire vineyard by inhibiting other plants from growing to their full potential. See, too many Christians are just like this fig tree, sucking up all God's good air, Soaking up his blessings, but unwilling or stingy in returning to him what is his due. Whether it be my talents, my service, oh Lord, forgive me, my talents, my, my, when my breath is in his hands. The treasure that he has blessed me with, the time the time he's given to me. We come to church and we expect the pastor to prod us, the worship leader to woo us, the Sabbath school teacher to stroke our egos. We come and we often sit like a bump on a log expecting the praise leader and the praise team to motivate us to give him praise that he is worthy of. But my brothers and my sisters, when we understand how truly blessed we are, when we grasp the fact that he has protected and provided for us and that he didn't have to do it. 
and that he's patient with us, then it is our, it is our awesome and grand privilege to render to him the praise that is due his holy name. And nobody has to draw that out of us. Whether it's on my job, at school, at play, wherever I am, he is God. And somebody ought to know it because the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, we might not all praise him the same way. Don't get me wrong. I understand. Sometimes you can sit down and just, just cry. But I'm going to tell you this, you ought to be moved somehow. You ought to be, because the Bible says, matter of fact, no, 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 this is not the Bible, not, it's not the Bible, it's not the Bible. This, this, is, this, is, this is the writings of one of my favorite authors. She says that if you, if you study the cross, if you encounter the cross, and you are not moved, it is a sin. It ought to do something for you. When you understand, when you begin to grasp what has been done for you. You, there ought to be a reaction. There ought to be a response. Somebody ought to say amen out there. Our cry, our cry should be, our cry should be, what shall I render to the Lord for all? And I'm quoting from the Bible now. I'm quoting from the Bible because David understood it. David got it. He got it. He said, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation. Are you saved? Have you been drinking with the cup of salvation? He says, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will, I will, I will pay my vows. Have you made some vows for 2020? I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Let, 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 that, 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 that's found in Psalms 116. And verses 12 to 14, what shall I render, what shall I return to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. I want everybody to know how good God's been to me. That's what David is saying. For it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Great is thy faithfulness. See, the owner is looking for some fruit, but he finds none. And so he says, cut it down. Time is up. Folks, let me, let me share this with you all. There is coming a time when God will say, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. There is a limit to the grace of God. My mother used to say, I'm giving you a long rope to hang yourself. <laughs> oh, we knew whenever mama said that, we were in grave danger of bumping up against something very unpleasant. It was time to straighten up a fly right. Come on, say amen. amen. Cut it down so other trees can grow. Cut it down so that more nutrients and water is available to the other trees in the vineyard. Quickly, the vine dresser steps in. Jesus steps in. <laughs> uh, somebody say he steps in. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up, sir. Give, give this tree one more year. One more year. One more year. Aren't you glad that Jesus steps in? Give it one more year. One more year. And I'm going to dig around the roots. And I'm going to fertilize it. This year you're going to feel Jesus digging around your roots. He's going to be doing some digging this year. And that digging, my brother, that digging, my sister, is unpleasant. He, he's going to allow some trials to come. Now, we, we, we say Happy New Year and all of that. Uh, but happy, happy is a byproduct of a relationship with Jesus. Like the sister said earlier today during the praise and worship time, she's not comfortable, but she's content. I don't know if you all missed that. You got it. God is not interested in your comfort. He's interested in your character. He's interested in you bringing, bringing forth, producing fruit. And so he will do whatever it takes 
so that you will produce fruit because if you don't produce fruit, your tree is going to be cut down, which means you're going to be lost. And he doesn't want you to be lost. You ought to say amen out there. He's not interesting that any should perish, but that all should come to everlasting life. And so he's going to dig around them roots a little bit, which means, oh, Lord, why are you digging around my roots? Oh, Jesus, why are you hurting my roots? Because I love you. And I got to dig around the roots sometime. Not only is he going to dig around the roots, and that's going to be uncomfortable, but, but, but let me also say this. He's also... He is also going to put some fertilizer on you. <laughs> yeah, you're going to find him this year fertilizing your life. Now, the fertilizer is, is what we call the good stuff. Uh, that's the blessings. That's the nutrients. Now, 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 now you, you might not know, but I'm a master gardener. One of the things that, that they taught me is that before you, you plant a garden, that you ought to do a soil test. Why do you do a soil test? You do a soil test because, this is when you're planting on a large scale. You do a soil test because sometimes the soil lacks certain nutrients. And you have to buy what's called soil amendments. That's manure, fertilizer. <laughs> and build up the soil. Are y'all with me? Different plants will take different things from the soil. Right? And sometimes you've got to put that thing back in there. See, God knows the experiences that you have been through, that there's some things you, you've lost. There's some things that are missing. There's some things that you need. And he knows what kind of nutrients you need so you can bring forth fruit in your life. You ought to say amen. amen. And so he's going to be digging around your roots. He's going to be fertilizing you this year. But whatever it is he's doing, whether you're going through tough times or you're experiencing good times, you must understand that the purpose is so that you might bring forth fruit. Somebody say fruit. Yeah. Vine dresser steps in. He says, give it another year. Let's dig around. Let's fertilize it. Let's give it some more attention, some more time. And if it bears fruit, good. But if not, then we can cut it down. I'm so glad today that we serve a God who is patient with us. Can you all say amen? amen? I serve a God who is patient with me. I serve a God who has given to me another chance, even when I don't deserve it. I tell you, people say he's a God of the second chance, but I'm so glad I know him as not just the God of a second chance, but he's the God of another chance. Because I tell you, there are times in my life, I'm just testifying right now, where I've messed up in the same way over and over again. I don't need a second chance or a third or a fourth or a fifth or a tenth chance. I just need another chance. Like the songwriter says, prone to wonder. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Anybody here prone to wonder? Raise your hand if you're prone to wonder. But he's been patient with you. He didn't cut you down. But he gave you another chance. You ought to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You ought to shout praise the Lord. Praise yeah, y'all can keep start playing now. Aren't you glad Jesus stepped in between you and certain destruction? Aren't you glad that God's judgment against sin, God's judgment against sin, God's judgment against sin fell on him? He endured the fiery furnace of hell for you and for me. That's called grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. See, that's the message of this parable today. We are here because of God's grace. Grace is getting something you don't deserve. God has given us another year because as Peter says, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. God is not about taking people's lives. He's about saving lives. And if we're still here today, it is only because of his protection, his purpose, and his patience. He's given us one more year of grace, and I declare, I declare today that it is one more year to seek him, one more year to love him, one more year to serve him, one more year to live for him, one more year to make him known, one more year to tell somebody that he's good all the time, and all the time he is good. One more year to give him praise, 
One more year to pray without ceasing. One more year to worship him. One more year to live for him. One more year to tell somebody that God loves them. One more year to bless his holy name. One more year. He's given you. He's given me. One more year. Can somebody just put your hands together and give him praise for that one more year? Somebody today is just thankful for another chance. You walked up in the house today. You weren't you, you woke up this morning and you weren't on your cooling board. <laughs> and you want your life to count for something this year. You, you, you want to bring forth fruit and you're saying, God, all I can do because of your grace is respond to your goodness. See, fruit comes, you don't have to make an apple tree bear fruit. It will produce fruit because it's an apple tree. Are you all with me? See, so you don't have to try to bear fruit. Bearing fruit has to do with your connection with Jesus. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches, right? He that abides in the eye in him, saying will bring forth much fruit. So you got to understand, that's, that's why God put us on this earth, is to bear fruit for his glory. Everything that God created, the first thing God said at creation week is be fruitful and... That's the Old Testament. New Testament, Jesus comes to John 15, he says the same thing. Every branch that beareth not fruit in me, he takes away. I want to bear fruit for the glory of God this year, amen? If that's you, if that's your desire, I'm going to invite you to stand right now. You're saying, God, I want to be fruitful in everything. I want to live a fruitful life. That means that's a life that has purpose. That's a life that has direction. That's a life that's making a difference in other people's lives. It's a life that's making an impact. And I do that in my worship. I do that in my testimony. I do that in my service. I do that when I use my talents. This year, this year, I want to challenge my church family in three ways. Three ways. I want to challenge you this year. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to read through the Word of God this year. Maybe you've never read through the Word of God. We have a study guide to help you this year. Read through the Word of God. It will change your life. There's nothing that can or will change our lives like the Word of God. We have a study guide. We have it on the outside. We send it out by email. If you need it, just text 619 Decatur Study Guide. We'll send it to you. 619 Decatur Study Guide. We'll send it to you. Or you can pick one up on the outside. That's the first thing, read through the Word. Secondly, I want to challenge you this year to get into a small group. We're going we're gonna to be starting a number of them. Parenting small group. Financial peace small group. Bereavement small group. Depression support small group. Bible study small group. We're we going to have all kinds of small groups. Matter of fact, one has already started for men. Where, where's, where's Deacon... Chris Howard, where was Deacon Howard? Somewhere around here, probably outside, outside. Start one already for men. And we all can get in one at the end of this year, the, right, right at the end of this month, I'm sorry, the end of this month, January 25. We're going to be starting small groups for everybody around the study of the Word of God. I want to challenge you to get into a small, build relationships with somebody. We, we can't make it alone. We need each other. Amen? I want to challenge you in the Word of God, challenge you in a small group. And then thirdly, I want to challenge you to serve. Serve. 
everybody can do something. Sir, sir, whether it's in the church or in the community, serve. Give of yourself. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that our service is the rent we pay for the space we occupy on earth. Service is the rent you pay, he said, for the space we occupy on this earth. I want to challenge you. Get in the Word this year. We, we want to help you with that. Get in a small group where you're accountable and others are accountable to you. To serve. Is that all right? Do I have any takers on those challenges? See, what, what, what I'm talking about here, and I just want to make it clear to you, is not just a New Year's resolution. I'm talking about a New Year revolution. Not resolution, but revolution. We need a change. We need God to come in and shake up some stuff. That's what we need in this church. That's what I need in my life. I'm tired of the same old, same old. It's not about entertainment and, and all of that. No, this is about meeting God. This is about encountering God and making a difference on this corner. I'm accountable to you. I want to I want to share something else with you. This is how serious I am. I, I've, I've determined this year not to take any speaking engagements outside of this area where I'm at. It doesn't mean I'm speaking every Sabbath here. I'm a, you know, you're not gonna hear my voice. Y'all get tired of hearing the pastor's voice all the time. But what I'm saying is, I want to pour myself into my church family. This is what I'm saying. I'm not traveling anywhere. That's a commitment I've made. I share that with my wife. I want to pour myself into my family. My family. Amen. My family. My church family. We're going to get this, get this building up. I want to give it my focus and my attention 100%. Are you all with me today? What's your commitment? What is it that you... When I say this year, I want to give myself to God in a whole new way. Somebody today, we're going to close the service. I somebody just want to say, Lord, I'm yours. I want to open up the doors of a church for you right now. This first Sabbath of a brand new year, this is your opportunity to come and surrender your heart and life to Jesus Christ. And so I call you right now in the name of Jesus. Come on down, give me your hand and give God your heart. Somebody needs to come. Somebody needs to say, yes, Lord. You've given me another year of grace. You've protected me. You've preserved me, you've purposed me, you're patient with me, and God, I'm going to render to you my life. It's broken, it's in pieces, it's a mess, but it's all I got. He accepts it. He accepts it. He loves you with an everlasting love. And I call you right now in his name. Slip out of your seat and come. It's the best thing you can do. It's the best start you can make. It's a new start. It's a brand new year, a brand new day, a brand new chapter. We'll be open today. I call you in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I'm connecting with you, Jesus, because that's where fruit bearing starts. It's when you connect with him. And so I call you right now. Somebody, somebody want to say, yes, Lord. Come, this is your moment. Don't hesitate. Come. The elders are waiting to receive you. God's arms are open. The doors of the kingdom are swinging wide. The hinges of grace. And he's calling you. This is your moment. Do not leave here today. 2019 is done. It's in the past. There's nothing you can change back there. But you can make a difference today that begins a whole bright, brand new future for you. Just one decision. Yes, Lord. I'm leaving the past behind me. And I'm stepping out into a bright, brand new future. I call you now in the name of Jesus. Somebody else needs to come right now. Church, you're praying. It might be the person standing next to you. And for some reason or another, I don't know you, my friend. And you don't know me. But God knows you. And he's put it on my heart right now to appeal to you. And to give you another moment of grace you have not made that decision for Jesus or maybe you have but you've wandered away you need to come back 
this is your moment. Don't leave this church the same way you came. He brought you here for this very purpose, this very moment. He knows you intimately. He knows you better than you know yourself. Don't turn him away. Don't turn him away. You see, folk, we don't know what happened to that fig tree. Whether it bore fruit or not, the Bible doesn't tell us. Because you know why? You and I are that fig tree. And the story is still being written. It's up to you. And it's up to me. So my brother, my sister, this is your moment. Do not hesitate. Hesitation is defeat. Doubt is defeat. Come. Surrender to him right now. Right now. Pastor Shelton, I want you to come and pray. Pray for, pray for us as we're standing here today. And pray for that man, that woman, that boy or girl who needs to be down front here. Needs to be down front. You need to come. And even while he's praying, you feel to come. You want to come back to the Lord, come back to a committed relationship with Jesus Christ. You want to come into a relationship with him for the first time. Please come, even while he's praying. Lord, we know that there are things going on around us. We know that there are plans being made on our behalf. We know that there are people who are praying on us not praying with us, but they only want to see our demise. Mm. But in the mighty name of Jesus, God, today we bind all those things up. Yes. God, we declare with our mouths and we believe in our hearts, God, that you're going to do things for us mm -hmm. that we have not yet seen, that hadn't even entered our minds, but we believe that those things that are meant to destroy us. God, you will use those same things to get your glory. God, we're trying to figure out why we still here. And God, you've given us a mission to spread the message all around us that there is a risen Savior and he's in the world today. His name is Jesus. Yes. So God, as we are here being lighthouses for our communities, God, we ask that, we, that you help us take this message farther than we could ever ask or think that you be with us on the workplace, that you be with us as we interact with our neighbors, that you be with our children as they interact with other kids at school, that someone from miles around will start running to us, asking us, what must we do to be saved? Yes. And God, as there is turmoil all around us, as people in white houses make plans for our country that will put us in danger, and God is as plans are being made on our behalf that we know not of. God, we just ask that you protect us, mm -hmm. that your hand would be with us, yes. that no evil will come near us, yes. that the angels of protection will go around our houses and around our cars both day and night, that we can run into you because you're a strong tower and we know that we are safe. Yes. God, we, we ask that all these things be given to us if it's in accordance to your will. But God, I also ask that you be with those who you've been talking to for quite some time. God, it's time to make a move, both I know and you know and they know that it's time to make a decision for you. So God, I'm, I'm gonna ask this, ask this request. I haven't done it before, but I know you'll come through. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice in this room that you've been talking to, God, help them to have a sleepless night. Mm. God, help them to, to have a taste in their mouths that they can't even eat. God, prevent their plans from going through until they say yes to you. Yes. God, I know you can do it, so I trust you. And all those 
who are left in here that are recommitting themselves to you this year. God, help them. God, we know that there is an enemy who is very angry with the decisions that we've made today. But God, now unto him who's able to keep us from falling. Yes. Who's able to keep us from stumbling over those things that so easily beset us. Mm -hmm. God, now unto him who can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or think unto him who's given us his blood and by his stripes we can be healed unto him God we ask for your strength when we are weak be our strength when we need your help help us and we'll be sure to give you the praise the honor and the glory for it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we've prayed. And all blood-washed believers in this place said together, Amen. 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 You may be seated in his presence. Just before we exit today, we certainly want to remind you to pick up a copy of the newsletter if you did not get one emailed to you or the Bible reading guide on the outside. I want to remind you of our prayer meeting, three-part series, Getting Back on Track. We thank Sister Rochelle Narine for talking about fasting today. We can talk some more about it on this Wednesday or coming up as we prepare for our 50 days of prayer and fasting at the end of this month. I want to remember and remind you that on next Sabbath, our beloved Pastor Michael Shelton and his family, Brianna, MJ, will be, we'll be bidding them farewell. They're still going to be in the state of Georgia. Amen? But he's moving on to a wider sphere of service. We want to lift him up in our prayers, and we certainly want to be here um, to share our love with him. Amen? On next Sabbath. And the following Sabbath, in the same way, we want to welcome uh, the man and his family, Pastor Daryl Palmes and his family, as they come here to serve as well. Let's keep these things in our prayers. Amen? God bless you and God keep you.